His story reads like the beginning of a western. One day, an unusually dressed man strolls into town. No one knows his name, where he comes from, or even why he's here. He barely speaks to anyone other than the occasional grunt and a few gestures. Rather than staying in the local inn, he sleeps in a cave on the outskirts of town. But rather than engaging in some Clint Eastwood-style shootouts the next day, he simply gathers a meal from one of the town's local residents, eats in silence, and trudges on. The process repeats exactly 34 days later, and then again 34 days after that, and on and on for the next three decades. And here I am thinking that my process of making these videos every week was starting to get a little repetitive. I'm Wilton Historical Society Associate Curator Nick Foster, and on this week's episode of History Is Here, we're going to delve into the life of one of the most mysterious men who's ever passed through Wilton, the Old Weather Man. Almost nothing is known about who he was and why he continuously walked a 365-mile circuit through over 40 towns in Connecticut, New York. Even 131 years after his death, attempts by scholars to solve the mystery of the Leather Man has provided few answers. What little is known about the Leather Man was documented by the accounts of those who witnessed his travels through their respective towns. While he seemed determined to stay silent, when he did need to communicate beyond a simple grunt, it was through short, one-word sentences in French. His rather creative moniker, by which he was known, came from the fact that his clothing consisted of roughly stitched together scraps of leather clothing and boots. He wore this large leather overcoat and pants at all times, during even the hottest of summer days. The leather man generally kept to himself, and at night slept in caves and other natural shelters he found near the towns that he passed through. In Wilton, he used a cavern near today what is Old Huckleberry Road. In 1875, when Rock Lake Reservoir was built, his cavern was flooded and he was forced to find a new rocky outcropping further north. When he couldn't scavenge food, he relied on the generosity of people in town who left out meals for him. It was considered an honor to have your meal chosen over one of your neighbors. And it appears that John Comstock, who lived at 77 Ridgefield Road, was one of his preferred stops. A possible clue to the Leatherman's origins comes from the tale of a man named Jules Martin, who, as the story goes, arrived in Bridgeport in June 1887. Martin was looking for a man named Jules Bourglet, the former suitor or fiancé of the daughter of a wealthy leather merchant in France. Bourglet had apparently taken over the business and led it into financial ruin. He fled the country in disgrace, and in a state of emotional distress, had taken to wandering the Connecticut countryside. Martin, employed by Bourglet's father, was sent to find him and bring him back to France to claim his inheritance. Supposedly, Martin tracked him down, but was unsuccessful in convincing the leather-clad recluse to return with him to Europe. The story, while certainly a promising lead, has been rejected by many scholars that have investigated the life of the Leather Man. Whatever his origins, the Leather Man remained a mainstay in the lives of many people who lived on his route throughout New York and Connecticut. His punctuality was famous, with people recording in their diaries the precise nature of his 34-day route, in some cases consistently keeping arrival times in some towns within a 15-minute window. School kids in Wilton would have classes paused as they ran out to greet the Leather Man with cookies. One teacher in Bristol, Connecticut, rewarded well-behaved students with the chance to give him a gift. He became such a local celebrity that a map of his route was published in the Hartford Globe. The Leather Man never attempted to cash in on his fame and leave his wandering ways. I mean, personally, I would have at least tried to get a walking shoe designed for me. I can only imagine the calluses on that guy's feet. And as it turns out, living in the woods for 30 years really does its damage on your health. In 1888, a heavy March snowfall left the Leather Man stranded in a snowbank where he needed to be rescued. It was then discovered that years of tobacco use had given him oral cancer. In 1889, a weakened leather man was finally coaxed into the Wilton home of Dick Moriarty, where he was fed milk and bread. Several weeks later, on March 24th, 1889, the leather man was found dead near Austin in New York. An autopsy determined he was approximately 50 years old. He was buried in Sparta Cemetery in Austin, with a headstone incorrectly naming him as Jules Borglay. Even after his death, 
the Leather Man was determined to keep his secrets. In May 2011, an archaeological dig conducted with the help of Connecticut State Archaeologist Nick Bellantoni attempted to exhume the remains of the Leather Man, whose grave was threatened by the proximity of a local state highway. The dig produced no actual human remains, but only coffin nails. As a result, DNA testing to help unlock the identity of the legendary Leather Man was impossible. Some soil and the coffin nails from the original grave were reburied in a spot farther from the road and rededicated with a new headstone simply reading The Leather Man. The true origins of The Leather Man will probably never be known, but his legacy lives on in various archives and museums along his route, like right here in the Society's Connecticut's History Wilton Stories exhibition. As always, thanks for watching. Remember to always wear your insoles when going on a hike and stay tuned for more history.